please uh, introduce yourself and uh, state the reasons for making this application for a request for reconsideration. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners, Director, Corp Council, staff. My name is Pam Bunn and I represent P. Ilani Partners. <coughs> I'm not going to repeat what we've already said in our application. I'll be brief and answer any questions the commissioners have. The, the action that was taken on February 7th was to basically defer action on P. Ilani's application, and I want to quote it, until such time as the State Commission on Water Resource Management can complete its public hearings and render findings regarding its update to the statewide water resource protection plan. That's how it was stated on the record of actions. As stated in the meeting, it, it was stated variously, but it was very clear that the commission was looking for some direction from the Water Commission. The effect of this commission's February 7th action is to de facto deny P. Ilani's application because the Water Commission is not going to finish its process by April 8th. So P. Ilani's request today is a very narrow one. It's, it's requesting the commission to reconsider that action. If it's granted, it will effectively undo the action taken at the February 7th meeting, returning matters to the state they were immediately prior to the action being taken. So the, the way matters stood at that point was that public testimony on the SMA application was closed and a motion to deny P. Ilani's application had failed for lack of a second. It's clear in taking the action that it did that this commission was waiting for some kind of answer from the Water Commission. It's also clear, however, that the Water Commission will answer any question concerning P. Ilani's proposed well when it considers P. Ilani's well permit, which is a step in the process. I just want to talk briefly about the roles of this commission as opposed to the Water Commission, because these roles are very clearly set out in the Constitution, statutes, regulations, all of which define the scheme. And, and there appears to be some, some blending. This commission is designated as the authority, the special, area the special management area authority under the Coastal Zone Management Act which is HRS 205A. It's charged with carrying out the objectives, the policies and procedures of part two of the CZMA dealing with SMA permits. And that's in HRS chapter, or section 205A 27. To carry out this conditions mandate, the commission is required to adopt certain guidelines for review of SMA applications. That's mandated in HRS section 205A26. The commission did as mandated in section 911E of the Planning Commission's rules. I'm sure you're all familiar with the, the criteria that are in <coughs> section 9-11E of your rules. P. Ilani has addressed each of those conditions in its application and in its presentations before this commission. And the planning department's recommendation on P. Ilani's application addresses each condition. The role of the planning department on this, I'm sorry, the planning commission on this application is to apply those criteria to the application to determine whether to grant or deny the application. Now here there's a little bit of gloss that, that may have created some confusion because of the implications of the public trust doctrine. As we've discussed, the public trust doctrine is a dual mandate. The two mandates are protection of the resource and maximizing reasonable beneficial use. In this case, because we are not in a water management area, so P. Ilani does not require a water use permit, it falls on this commission to consider the second of those mandates, reasonable beneficial use. And we know from the Hawaii Supreme Court in the Kauai Springs case that, that the way the commission evaluates whether the use is reasonable beneficial 
is by determining whether it will interfere with any public trust use of water? The answer is clearly no. Even at the maximum projected use, Pi'ilani will still use less than 0.1% of the sustainable yield of the Hilo Aquifer. And that's after all current and future projected uses and DHHL <coughs> reservations are accounted for. There is no public trust use that will be deprived of water by granting Pi'ilani's permit. The other mandate of the public trust doctrine, protection of the resource, <coughs> is given by constitution, statute, and rule to the Water Commission. Article 11, section seven, is the provision of the Hawaii Constitution that states that the state has an obligation to protect, control, and regulate use of Hawaii's resources for the benefit of its people. That provision is often referred to as the, the constitutional mandate of the public trust doctrine in Hawaii. That same provision also provides for the creation by the legislature of a water resources agency to, among other things, protect ground and surface water resources. The legislature created that agency. That's the Water Commission. It also enacted the Water Code, HRS Chapter 174C, Part 7 of which concerns the Water Commission's mandate with respect to wells. Several statutes in there. So as made clear in the draft Water Resources Protection Plan update that the Commission is now working on, the purpose of Part 7 of the Water Code and of the Hawaii well construction and pump installation standards used by the, the Water Commission is to ensure protection and optimization of groundwater resources. And those, that's in attachments that have been attached to our application. The Commission's February 7th action turns the constitutional and statutory framework upside down. The Commission appears to be deferring to the completion of the WRPP update, <coughs> which re results in a denial of Pi'ilani's application without ever considering the criteria or, or making any determination based on the criteria in the Commission's Rule 911E. Moreover, the Commission's application will prevent the Water Commission from answering whatever question the Commission had about Pi'ilani's well permit. Because if the, if the SMA application is deemed denied, the Water Commission will never get to our well permit. It won't consider it. And you can see that in Exhibit F to our motion, which is a, a schematic diagram from the WRPP of the, the well permitting process that's used by the Water Commission. So what, what Pi'ilani respectfully requests is for this commission to do its job under the CZMA and evaluate the criteria that are in the commission's rule 911E. And at the same time, to move out of the way for the water commission to do its job and to evaluate <coughs> whether Pi'ilani's proposed well will have any effect on the protection of the resource. If the Water Commission believes that, that Pi'ilani's proposed well will put the resource at risk, it won't <coughs> grant the well permit. It has standards that, that it applies to. So deferring to the Water Commission to consider the well permit is appropriate and I believe required by statute. But deferring to the WRPP update, so this commission rather than the Water Commission can decide whether the well is appropriate is not in keeping with the statutory scheme. So we would respectfully request that the Commission reconsider the indefinite continuance it imposed on February 7th, apply the SMA criteria and the Planning Department's recommendation, and wait for the Water Commission to rule on Pi'ilani's well permit. Thank you. I'll take any questions. We have at this time 26 people signed up to testify on this matter. I'd like to remind uh, the people who are going to testify that this is a request for reconsideration, but if 
you still wish to testify on this uh, reconsideration uh, action, um, please do so. At this time, I'm going to call up uh, four testifiers at a time. Uh, Len Gamsla, Dwight Vicente, Lyman Lincoln, and Corey Harden. If you would come forward. Thank you, sir. I'm Len Gambla. Good morning and aloha, everybody. Thanks for taking your time to listen to the uh, folks who took off work today to come testify. Um, regarding the request to reconsider the SMA use permit to develop the potable water well, I, I am not in favor of uh, deferring. I mean, I'm in favor of continue to defer. Um, I'm not in favor of the project. When I, when I hear the uh, individual speak about the public use, it is a public use, it's public trust, water, I get it, reasonable and beneficial use of the water. If it's uh, reasonable and beneficial to me would be something like a public-private partnership. To me that would make more sense than a completely private entity taking the water, benefiting. You know, there's a big out, there's an outflow of water, but I wouldn't see the inflow of money from a financial perspective that would directly benefit the county. It might benefit the state, but I don't think the money that would, would come back to the county in particular. So to keep it brief, I'm not in favor of it. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Lyman Lincoln. And i uh, uh, just like to say that I, I oppose the, uh, the project. And uh, uh, I'm against uh, having this uh, uh, reconsidered. Thank you. Uh, Dwight Percent to represent the Wine Kingdom. Uh, you heard about the public trust doctrine. It comes from Article 4, Section 3, Clause 2 of the U.S. Constitution, which is limited to one territory, Northwest Ordinance of 1787, Article 5. It does not apply here. <coughs> They've been applying it to lands, rebrand, uh, Crown and Government lands rebranded as Hawaiian home lands, so one point, uh, 1,750,000 acres only. So unless these lands are considered Hawaiian homelands, that does not apply. And even that is questionable because this is, as I stated, the Hawaiian Kingdom, Crown and Government lands. The resources belong to the Hawaiian Kingdom, whether it's mineral or underground water, water in the stream, even the ocean. So the, uh, the question is, uh, who is claiming they own these lands? Are they nationals of the Hawaiian Kingdom, or are they foreign nationals who uh, remain here after the treaties ended in 1897? What the United States did in 1898, they extended their treaties with those countries whose treaties ended with the Hawaiian Kingdom to this kingdom, which the U.S. Constitution does not authorize. Treaties for the U.S. is remain the 13 states only. It does not go beyond. And then the... Um, uh, what they're doing is the, using the uh, Downs versus Bidwell to claim jurisdiction over not, not only the Hawaiian Kingdom, but al also other countries. And they call them, under that scheme, incorporated or unincorporated territories. Well, the 1.750,000 uh, acres were called incorporated territory and was destined to become a fake state of Hawaii. And the uh, unincorporated territories, you can include South Korea, Japan, Philippines, uh, Guam, uh, Northern Marianas, Micronesia, um, Gua uh, Panas Panama Zone, uh, Puerto Rico, Virgin Isles, uh, Guantanamo Bay, Germany, uh, Turkey, Spain, Middle East, and wherever you find the U.S. military. All you got to do is read the, uh, the rape cases that happened in Okinawa that the U.S. military was uh, a part of. They claim that these, uh, Okinawa is a territory of the United States, so they don't get prosecuted under Okinawan law. It's not only the military base, but also the surrounding lands. So there's a lot of questions that go into uh, dealing with laws of nations. And the United States, as I stated, is only 13 states. There's no amendment to the Constitution to go beyond that. They need to amend the Constitution through Article 5, which has not happened so far. Thank you. Good morning. Corey Harden for Sierra Club Mokuloa Group. Thank you for your service on the commission. 
I hope you will stand firm on your previous decision. Um, I hope you folks know whether the owners of Pi'ilani are citizens of the state. The um, resources are held in trust for the citizens of the state. I don't know if they're citizens. Um, we differ with many points in the motion for recon reconsideration. <coughs> for example, Pi'ilani Partners says um, the new draft plan will not have any findings. However, the um, update that we heard about at the hearing last week on this plan um, says they have a goal of getting a foundation of data, <coughs> which, <coughs> excuse me, sounds like findings to me. Pete Lonnie Partner says um, the plan will not come up with new water regulations, but um, the update talks about possibly enforcement rules for people who don't report water use. That sounds like regulations to me. Pilani Partners has said that um, the com Water Commission will not come up with anything material on the SMA application, but at the hearing on the plan last week, there was testimony that was material to the application, and that testimony will be considered when the plan is written. I'm just summarizing my written stuff here. Um, Pilani Partners says it's not appropriate for you guys to make this decision, um, but Earth Justice said regarding the Kauai Springs case, government agencies have duties under the public trust independent of permit requirements. And Native Hawaiian leaders have opposed Pilani, and there's the Public Access Shoreline Hawaii decision saying that the Planning Commission was obligated to preserve and protect Native Hawaiian rights to the extent feasible when doing SMA permits. The Hawaii Supreme Court in the Kauai Springs case said no person or entity has automatic vested rights to water. Also said private commercial use is not protected by the public trust and the agency must apply a resumption in favor of public use, access, enjoyment, and resource protection. Pi'ilani has offered student financial aid to offset public trust impacts, but Earth Justice has questioned whether community benefit payments fulfill public trust obligation. And lastly, Pi'ilani offered a background in chronology it said nothing about the dozens of testifiers and scores of emails that have come in in opposition since August. You guys know nobody has come out to support this project except the folks paid by the owners. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Dion Dissidom and uh, I'm here in opposition to this project. Uh, I just have two points. One is the aquifer. It's a limited resource and our population's growing in leaps and bounds. We need to think of the future. Um, so that's one point. Also, plastic pollution is at a crisis level worldwide on the island and elsewhere. And um, it's killing wildlife, it's killing us. Why contribute to the problem? Let's support more ecologically you know, sound practices. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Anale Ferguson. I represent Nakupuna Moku Kiavi, which is a Kupuna organization that has representatives from all six districts of this island. Um, we're in opposition to any reconsideration of uh, the previous decision to wait until the findings of the Water Com <coughs> uh, Commission on Water Resources were made available. I attended the last meeting where the attorney for P. Lani Bottling Plant opted not to accept the option to delay this application consideration until the, the Council on Water Resource Management was completed and available and said, she accept, and said she accepted the fact that if the permit was not granted before the outcome of the, C, uh, of the Commission on Water Resource Management and that the 90 days had passed since they were dated, that they would have rendered the application in default denial. The attorney now wants the Planning Commission to reconsider their own decision, claiming there's nothing that would change with respect to the application from the Council on Water Resource Management. I disagree with this statement. I attended the meeting at the, of the um, Commission on Water Resource Management in Hilo last week where 
where, by the way, I didn't happen to see the applicant. And um, there was a lot of discussion surrounding the Mauna Kea Aquifer. Um, there was a lot of testimony given that directly related to the Mauna Kea Aquifer and, it, and the need <coughs> to understand more of what, what are some of the impacts known and unknown regarding the tapping of this healed aquifer. <coughs> Talk included considering not only uh, not allowing this aquifer to be touched, but rather pres preserved for future generations or a possible backup in the event of the Monolo Aquifer is somehow compromised. This request, should be re this request for reconsideration should be denied. The Planning Commission should wait until the release of the findings of the uh, Commission on Water Resource Management is made available. The Planning Commission should hold fast the decision they made and, and should also note that, has, that, that there has yet to be one person to testify in favor of this project. One of the outstanding statements that was made at the uh, Council on Water Resource Management is that they and the local planning commission have a right to use their own discretion. And when, uh, when it comes to matters such as this, we must, we, we must remember that just because something is not against the law, it does not mean that the product, project is in the best interest of the public, and especially for our children, who should be able to be assured that we have <coughs> protected their interest. Um, I want to also reiterate what I said in the last testimony, and I also said it at the commission, that the state and the counties are merely trustees of resources that were stolen from the Hawaiian Kingdom, including the land that is identified by the Pilani Body and Plant. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Joe. Oh, it's good to see you. Thank you to you guys. Thank you, everybody, for the work you guys do. You know, I, I know how difficult this is. And thank you, everybody, for showing up. I've been in communities where this doesn't, in fact, happen. So it's nice to know that the health of our community is still engaged in process and dialogue around these things. So of course, I'm in opposition to the facility. I'm just going to read a quick statement. Some polls recently have found that as much as 43% of the American public refuses to believe climate change is even occurring. Recent extreme weather events these last few months have given rise to a few converts from this extreme group of conservatives. As one of several representatives from Hawaii, I am part of the NCAR, National Center for Atmospheric Research, Rising Voices, Indigenous Knowledge and Modern Science Effort. It's ongoing for seven years in partnership with the United Kingdom, United States and its agencies such as NOAA, the National Ocean and Atmospheric Administration, National Weather Service, and FEMA, who I work for, as you know. Whose scientists overwhelmingly <coughs> and unsurprisingly believe that we are entering the sixth great extinction moment on the planet. That's for the last two and a half billion years. This is only the sixth time it's happening. Just to make sure that those of us who cut out of science and went surfing understand what I'm talking about. Less than 2% of the water available in the world is fresh. Potable water drinkable water could be considered the most valuable necessity on the planet. I repeat, necessity. Water is not a commodity. You do not have an option. Whether you'll drink or resist drinking, time and tide, eventually you will need to drink. The untapped, untouched, heretofore unviolated aquifer of Mauna Kea, clearly one of the great treasures of the world, is a living legacy we leave our children, our grandchildren, and the unborn future. This, our generation, has shown the propensity for greed, for indulgence, for self-consumption. The act of sacrificing the potential survival of our future generations for a pittance of GE tax in an attempt to create county-based revenues while sentencing our children to an uncertain future by wresting from them the last great resource to feed our resorts 
is the height of both political and civil irresponsibility by our elected officials and our appointed officials. Now, sacrificing, sacrificing the well-being of the people of Hawaii for a few dollars is more than reprehensible at the very least. And at the very best, and I mean this for the camera and those beyond this room, at the very best, that outcome will energize a movement to establish new leadership. With all respect, please excuse the thinly veiled threat. Thank you for your time. Those of you in this room, I know you take it seriously. And I know you guys come down and put forth the effort and commitment. And thank you for your leadership. Mahalo. Aloha kako. I'm Julie Stoll. I respectfully request that you deny the applicant Pi'ilani Partners LLC motion for reconsideration of action taken on February 7th on the special management area use permit application. I oppose taking public trust water from the deep, pristine aquifer of Mauna Kea to send much of it off island, creating more plastic waste on our planet, all to create profit for a handful of people. The waters of Hawaii belong to Hawaii. Water is a public resource and should never be allowed to become private, owned, or soil sold. The Mauna Kea aquifer, the largest aquifer in the islands, is unbreached and should not be compromised. This aquifer should be protected and preserved for the future. The ecosystem is dependent on this aquifer remaining intact. Hawaiian leaders have opposed this project. We should listen to the people of this aina. I have learned from Hawaiians that water is the physical manifestation of spirit. It is not a commodity and it should be protected at all costs. Many people across the state are currently submitting comments to this plan. It is very important that, that this democratic process be allowed to play out so the public has every opportunity to determine how Hawaii protect, protects its most valuable resource. Why? In communities where this is not allowed to happen, we see corporate exploitation that often results in permanent contamination of water supplies, such as in Flint, Michigan. The Windward Planning Commission's duty is to render decisions that are in the best interest of the public, public's health, the public's safety, and the public's interest. And that duty logically includes utilizing the final water resource protection plan in consideration of this decision. Further, an SMA special use area permit is, by definition, tied to a specific special use. It would be incredibly short-sighted to grant an SMA permit without the certainty that the special use request was in fact guaranteed, and certainly P.E. Lani Partners does not have that guarantee to offer. In the future, water will be a sacred commodity. Our planet is reaching the point of peak water. We are already seeing the impact of climate extremes to many places and the changes of weather patterns right here in Hawaii. Why would we allow a private corporation to come in, take water from the pristine Mauna Kea aquifer and sell it for profit? This water should be used wisely, preserved as much as possible and remain intact and pristine source of water for future generations. Again, I formally request that you deny applicant P.E. Lani Partners, LLC's motion for reconsideration of action. Aloha, I'm Sylvia Dolina, and I'm representing Pelilani Farm, which is an aquaculture farm. <clears throat> and I am opposed to the P.E. Lani Partners <coughs> use of Hawaii's water. As previous testifiers have said, this is a very precious resource that will become a more precious resource in the future. And we have to very carefully consider any use or application of this precious resource. We are all morally and ethically responsible to protect our natural resources on this island not just you as commissioners, not just the Water Commission, but all of us as individual citizens must do our part to protect the resources for the future. And that's what I'm asking all of us to do. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Susan Rosier. I wanna thank you all for volunteering for these positions. 
I've been in similar situations myself. It's not an easy thing. And it's sometimes you have to make very difficult decisions. This decision should be kind of clear. It's public trust water. And this is the public. And not one public has come out and said, we like this, only private. And one of the problems that we've had in this fraudulent state of Hawaii mm -hmm. is that it was created for profit. It's all based on profit. The Hawaiian Kingdom Constitution was changed so that Dole et al. could profit. And I've come to a few of your meetings and I really appreciate that you look past that. You look at the public because you are part of the public. You're not one of those getting paid to support the private enterprises. Recently, Dr. Desias came out with a second letter and uh, in he wrote it in December. And I'm sure you're aware of the first letter that he wrote last, last year, February. This letter that he wrote is directed towards the UN. There are three pages. I didn't bring it today. I will be sending them to each of you individually at your office. In that letter, he described 40 years that he was with the UN that Hawaiians have issued complaints with the UN about the governing actions here, raping the land and controlling all the water. I'm from Maui. I know about water. I know about the streams. I know about living up country where we lived in consistent drought conditions because all the water was diverted down to the new hotel. <coughs> because they must have swimming pools, but we can't water our cattle unless we catch it from the rain. <coughs> Please let the Water Commission do their job on this. Please. And I'm here to tell you, even though other people have, it's kind of a big threat to be thought of as being a war criminal. And I understand that you're in that position currently. But please understand that we as a people and you as our government, because you are really actually an extension of the Hawaiian kingdom, and yeah. this can huli from within. But it's going to take each of us and each of you and each of us supporting you folks to do that for us. Because this is not going to go away. It's only getting bigger. Bigger and bigger, and it's not young people anymore, it's everyone. We all know it, you know it, it's time to address the elephant in the world, in the world, the whole world. The military seems to be taking over every country in the world. And I'm sorry to the Pi'ilani people that get paid for this, like, she comes up here and acts like she's a lawyer telling you what you're not doing right? That's not right, that's not really not right. I appreciate your knowledge and please, I appreciate your please presentation. Wrap it up. And yeah. I thank you very much once again for doing what the public wants. Mahalo. Aloha Kako. My name is Tanya Yamanaka Anasazian. And I'm from KL. I'm very opposed to this project. I hope that you'll not only hold off on reconsideration but stop this project and it's tracks immediately. No matter what facts of process and water protection Pi'ilani brings up, their fight is one of the mind and of the intellect. It's of business over life itself. Proving their business concept and processes are legal doesn't mean they're pono. Certainly not in the best interest of our future and the future of all life here. The Pi'ilani pro Pi project is about raping and pillaging one of the last virgin natural resources we have left after decades and decades of bad business practices, county councils, planning commissions, and volunteers have been willing to enable and approve it. A plastic water bottling company in 2019 
As we hover on the verge of banning single-use plastics and other single-use consumables, this is outrageous. I'm aghast at the lack of perspective and vision of you all, of Pi'ilani, of our business community. This is extremely outrageous. It, I, I, you, I can't even put into words sometimes how I'm feeling, so I apologize for my over-emotion. You guys are lucky I meditate on a regular basis. <laughs> because it really feels like we're going back in time. On February 26th of this year, the Hawaii Senate Ways and Means Committee passed SB 522, which calls for an outright ban of single-use products, including plastic food packaging, single-use beverage containers like plastic water bottles and utensils. At 1.2 million bottles a day, this would be 438 million plastic bottles per year originating right here in Hilo. That's what you're allowing. When we want to ban this practice, uh, ole, I ask humbly that you deny applicant Pi'ilani partners. And I, I do feel bad for you guys, because you guys are really off course. <laughs> you're just off course. So thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to provide uh, my opinion. Aloha. I'm uh, Maria Fable. I attended the February meeting. And I'd just like to point out again, as uh, uh, another person did during the testimony, that um, the Pialani representatives were the one that set um, the denial in motion by their refusal to um, approve <coughs> or accept um, the commission's desire for continuance. That's why we're even here today. They could have approved it at that time, and they could have just waited for the commission to eventually come to the point where they would reconsider it. Um, so I'm wondering why, why, why the reconsideration? Uh, also, I'd like to address, not in great depth, some of the um, issues that everyone else has brought up, like how does pumping water that is a public resource for private property benefit the people of Hawaii? Mm -hmm. As others have also mentioned, the people of Hawaii are here. They're the ones that send in comments. How many have you? How many people from this island have you heard from that approve of this? Virtually, I, was, I don't know all of the comments on send in online and, and other ways, but I would assume it's a very small number. Uh, Finally, and this is totally different from anything that anyone has said, but I'd like to point out that the, the location of the bottling plant directly across from the site of the uh, Mary Monarch Festival, is that the, what we want to present to people visiting Hilo for the Mary Monarch Festival, a, a bottling factory? To me, that's a real eyesore. And that's just an aesthetic thing. It has nothing to do with the most compelling reason, which is converting a, private, uh, a public resource into private property. Thank you. Okay. My name is Cherie Grafor, and I'm on the executive committee for Surfrider um, Hawaii Chapter Kona Ka'ea. And we voted um, <coughs> as an executive committee to uh, oppose the Pi'ilani water bottling plant. We have a, a thousand members, 1,127. Um, this is my personal testimony and just wanted to point out that it's really nerve wracking testifying and everybody's coming here testifying again and the water bottling plant didn't bother to testify today. Um, single use plastics, it takes 10 minutes to make, 20 minutes to use and pollution for generations and lifetimes. You all have reusable drinkware, so you already know. Um, you've been made aware that the SB 522 passed in the Senate Ways and Means, so it's going to ban single-use plastics. Um, Hawaii County was the first to ban plastic bags. Um, other counties followed and other states followed. We also banned styrofoam, so we're in the right direction. The Mauna Kea Aquifer is untouched. The impact study is still not done. The special use permit is still not approved. Why push through before all the requirements are done being completed? Um, please do not commodify our natural resources without due process. 
The plastic particles um, are going to blow everywhere and Hawaii is the capital for the most <coughs> endangered species. We are in the middle of the ocean. Um, when we had the hurricane scares, the produce shelves were empty. Um, they and water is always the first thing to sell out. If we don't have water and protect our water for the future, we're screwed. Um, Kona has a shortage of water, which is also on this island. It's one of the four areas most um, prone to drought. On February 7th, you had a deferment. The Water Commission must finish their process. The resources in trust for the residents of this county, not um, an outside county trying to make money. Um, lastly, if someone came to your house at your backyard and started filling up water bottles and trying to sell them, you would be upset. This is the same thing, but for our island. My name is Sherry Thal, and I live in Hawaiian Paradise Park. Thank you very much for your work that you do. We really appreciate what you're doing. Um, thousands have lived without love. No one without water, says W.H. Auden. Water is critical for sustainable development, including environmental integrity and the alleviation of poverty and hunger, and is indispensable for human health and well-being, says the United Nations. It is with a heavy and strong heart that I uh, am here today opposing granting any permits or rights whatsoever to Piilani Partners <coughs> or any affiliates for a water extracting and bottling facility in Hilo, Hawaii. To think that a company would want to come to Hilo, drill for our water, our water in our pristine and unique aquifer, and then bottle it in single-use plastic containers and ship it off island is a travesty. Absolutely ridiculous. An extraction and bottling plant could pose an enormous threat to our water safety and resource on Hawaii Island. If we take this from a purely business standpoint, a, a water bottling facility such as this would be completely outmoded and outdated before it could even be built because single-use plastic containers are toxic and are rapidly becoming an item to eradicate on our planet. It would be a shame if Hilo fell so far behind the curve by thinking that a bottling plant would be a good business practice. This would truly be a disastrous investment, not only for our town, but for our environment. If we take this project from an environmental view, this too would be horrifying for a number of reasons and just a few. Single-use plastic to toxicity to our oceans and species of all kinds, including humans. Breast cancer has long been associated with plastic bottles and sea life is deeply threatened by plastics. Do we want to be adding to the already out of control mid-Pacific gyre? I don't think so. Drilling our pristine aquifer could permanently contaminate Hawaii's deep water source along with a, posing a threat of contamination all the way down to the ocean, potentially destroying many fragile ecosystems on our island. Flying or shipping bottled water from this island is a huge carbon footprint. Water is the most precious resource on our planet. Public water rights must be will be adversely affected by a bottling plant. We must keep Hawaii's water sources, especially the deep water aquifers such as Kaohe, clean, pure, and unadulterated. We must deeply consider Hawaii's water security and future. Please stop this project. Mahalo. Good morning, aloha. My name's Deborah Ward. Um, I haven't <coughs> testified on this issue before because I, I fully expected that you folks would make a good decision, and um, I think you will. I urge you to deny the reconsideration. Um, this is not a, use, a beneficial use of our water. Um, it's not a protection of our resource. And uh, these are the wa waters of Kane. Um, it's a large aquifer, but it's being <coughs> challenged because Pohakuloa wants to use it, the military base. Um, the Huohonua plant is proposing to take 21 million gallons a day out of the same aquifer for a carbon producing um, energy facility that will not, that will actually add carbon to our atmosphere a long time before those trees regrow. Um, we are 2,000 miles from another water source 
for instance, a glacier or a river. Um, we don't we don't live in a place where we have an automatic ex you know um, way to get more water. And um, we're 500 miles from Oahu's water, which is at risk because of the um, the Red Hill contamination by military um, fuel. And there may well be a demand for that water should those waters become contaminated. We have a headline today, well not today, but last week, about desalination of water in Kona because the Kona waters are already salty, unpleasant to drink, and dangerous not only for residents but for the tourists. And yesterday in my mailbox, I got a special report from The Economist about thirsty, the thirsty planet. It's a special report just on water, and I'll just paraphrase a couple of things. The water has to rely, sorry, the world has to rely on just 0.75 of the planet's available water, almost all of which is subterranean groundwater. And it's, the research says that um, the groundwater systems are likely to take far longer fully to respond to differences induced by climate change than does surface water. Only half the world's groundwater flows are likely to find a new equilibrium within 100 years. And the arid regions where water is scarce are often um, where response times are the longest. So the full impact of water withdrawals now may not be felt for decades or much longer in some cases. And with that, I close and ask you to reconsider. My name is Greg Dow. I live in Keau, Hawaii here. And um, I want to say mahalo for your considerations for this uh, project that is being considered here. I'm in opposition to reconsider the uh, Windward Planning Commission's decision of February 7th, 2019 meeting. And I'm going to just defer any more ar uh, arguments because I can't say it as well as the people who sit at this table and have preceded me. So I'm going to just say we need to save our water for the people who live here and we need to be environmentally sound. Any citizen you know, resident, you can make an application to the planning department for SMA, for your house. If you submit an application and you kind of check the minimum qualifications, your, your application, if it has to be heard from the commission, will come forth to the commission. I think most of you who are kind of here understand that, but I'm not sure everybody does. Meaning just because there's an application in front of the commission does not mean there was support from the commission. In a lot of cases, a new application, they, they, it's the first time they're hearing it. Okay, I do my job as the planning director to work with staff to vet applications, make sure they hit the minimum qualifications in terms of, and then I make a recommendation to the commissioners. Okay, and so just because they're hearing it doesn't mean that they're approving it or disapproving it. Okay, that's this, this process of having the community speak to them about the project is exactly the democratic process we have here in Hawaii. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. To my left, introduce yourself, speak into the microphone, and proceed. Aloha. Uh, my name is Millicent Cummings. I am a, a rational, thinking human being, so of course I oppose any kind of project from a profit-based private entity to access a public trust in any way, shape, or form, particularly when that access could compromise the public trust. This is immoral to even suggest that this aquifer be tampered with in any way. If we are to consider not just our own generation, but our all future generations, it is amoral, unthinking, and reckless piracy, in, in my humble opinion. Um, really, uh, all I can say is kukia imauna. Kukia imauna. Kukia imauna. And AO. Aloha mai kako. First of all, mahalo um, for all your folks' work um, on this commission. <coughs> um, my name is Lahela Kamara. I live with my ohana in the Ahupua of Kaumana um, in Hilo, um, a little below the Ahupua of Kaohe, which is where um, the water in this Mauna Kea aquifer comes from. Um, thank you for your folks' decision last month to defer 
um, action on this application. And I'm here to ask um, today that you stand firm in that decision. There has been undeniable testimony from this community against this project. Um, and even more so today. The fact is, we don't know enough about this aquifer. And it has been tapped before. And we don't want to set any precedent that that's OK. We don't know enough about it. And so I don't even want to say that we should do more research to see if we can have an effect on it. This vai, um, as Mr. Nance stated, um, is capped by 400,000 year old <coughs> land. What does that even mean? We don't even know that. That's older than any of us here. And just the fact that we don't know what that means to us, we probably even ha haven't even asked that question. What does that water mean? What does that land mean? What does it mean to drill into that? Just because of that, you guys should continue to hold, stand firm on your decision. Um, hopefully, there are, there's good work to be done with the Commission of Water um, Resources in their, in their community meetings, in their um, effort to seek the right kind of protections for these deep aquifers. And that people of these islands can have a better understanding of these vai. Our kupuna knew that it, was, that it was a very important resource. It's ka'ohe. It is a contained water system. Our kupuna knew that it may not be written in a commission plan or any kind of law, but it's in our oli, it's in our mo'olelo, and it's there. And if we look there, and if we look into ourselves, we know the answer already. So please, Stick with your decision and defer action. Mahalo. Aloha, my name is Ariel Murphy. I'm a punatic and I'm proud of it. Most of the things I want to say have been said. Um, and I'll be very brief about what I really want to say. Number one, water, potable, fresh, clean water is slowly becoming a very scarce resource. And we see that on the mainland, uh, California is trucking its water from Mexico and other states, uh, nearby states. We see Nestle buying up practically all the water rights it can lay its hands on. Okay? We are an island in the middle of the Pacific. We have this public resource, a resource that we need to keep in trust and protect from greedy people who are just after making money and for future generations, our children and grandchildren. I'm not here to represent any group. I come here as a Hawaiian, although I don't have any. I'm not Kanaka, but I am Hawaiian. So. Um, and we made ourselves part, and we take pride in, we are the only state who is a part of the Paris Accord. I think uh, getting this water, plastic water bottling facility uh, to operate is just not consistent or is not in alignment with our being a member of the Paris Accord. And the other thing is, um, it's like water is like the air we breathe. What are they going to do next? Bottle the air we breathe and charge us for it? And the other thing is, if I may, if I may uh, um, uh, put it into an analogy, the Mauna Kea Aquifer is like um, a piggy bank. It's something that, you know, each member of we are a family, we put money into it for the future, just in case there's a very urgent need to break that bank. But now one member of the family wants to use that money, break that bank, and go gorge himself at the uh, uh, buffet at Queen's Court. That doesn't seem right. Is there a water shortage? Are we running out of water? 
What the fuck do we need a water bottling facility for? Thank you very much. Aloha. And please pardon my language. Hello. Uh, Joseph Kuli, uh, Lizzie Kamara, ko Noah, or Mona Kia, or Mona, or Novai Kapua, Kanya, or Uvai. Um, I live with my family in the Avama Okele of Kaumana. Um, I want to thank all of you guys um, um, on this commission. I, through this process, I really come to appreciate the position that you're in, and these are very hard, um, these are very hard issues to uh, to weigh in on. And, 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 and I really thank you guys for for. Um, uh, for continuing to hear us and for this for this big kuleana that's on your guys' shoulders. I know there's a lot of things that you guys cannot um, weigh in on, but I want to, um, I'm here to try and help you guys to make this decision. Um, and you guys can weigh in on the public trust, on the public trust doctrine. Um, and again, it does com uh, comprise of two things, the protection of the resource, and also on the, um, uh, considering beneficial uses. And I think it's very, um, I think it's very dangerous for us to continue to consider privatization of water as a beneficial use. And you guys do have your guys' discretion to use on that. And I know it's been done before, but you know, we continue to make that precedent with each decision that we make. Um, you know, the, you know um, uh, if, we con if we continue, continue to, to consider the, 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 the correlative and the perlative rights of landowners and tap and privatization of water as a beneficial use, um, it's just gonna draw in more people who want to exploit our resources. Um, looking back on the, under the public trust doctrine is also the, the precautionary principle um, that the state has um, the duty to take anticipatory action to prevent harm to public resources. Um, in, in the Waiahole one case, the Hawaii Supreme Court discussed the precautionary, precautionary principle and ruled that the lack of full scientific certainty should not be a basis for postponing effective measures of prevent, uh, to prevent environment, environmental degradation. Now, I just want to just come back to the, the fact that we just found out about this water resource, um, and, and uh, in doing more research, the last well that was um, dug into the, um, the Mauna Kea deep confined aquifer, they had, they had water coming up at 11 bar, 160 PSI out of a five, out of a five, inch, five inch pipe. Um, and it's highly pressurized at 1,000 feet below under Mauna Kea flow. So it's something that um, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable um, with any more drilling going into there. Um, so, so just to reiterate the precautionary principle, um, and and going back, to, um, so so touching now on on the, on the decision in February to to, to defer to the um, uh, until after the, the sea worm has come up with its water protection plan. Um, I was at the last meeting on, on the 28th. Uh, I did give testimony, and and um, and why I think you guys should should uphold that decision to to defer to the to uh, until after we have this, this water protection plan. Um, Seaworm um, does acknowledge in the water protection plan that the, the deep confined aquifers are things that we need more information on. Um, currently, this, this water re resource is undesignated. So what it basically means, as it, as it currently stands, even though this is our most, our most abundant, um, most abundant, uh, most pristine, oh, it's three minutes already. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, shucks. Okay. Um, so, per, so basically, under the current, how it currently stands, there's no protection for this water. Even though it's the most valuable, it's a this resource, it's the most pristine work. Under um, the current um, framework of things, because it's undesignated, um, there, there's really no protection for it other than, than looking at how we're going to drill a well. Um, there's no um, consideration given to whether we should drill a well or not, the amount of water to be used, and um, and, and whether or not there are alternative re alternative sources, which there are, um, 350 please, million gallons. Please wrap it up, sir. Okay, thank you very much. And um, so one thing I want to help you guys out with in making this decision, one way, if, you don't, if you're not going to uphold the, the decision to defer, you guys can straight out deny this permit because they're asking for the wrong aquifer. It's not the Hilo aquifer. It's not the Onomea aquifer. It's the deep Mauna Kea confined aquifer. So you can deny the permit on the basis that they're asking for the wrong aquifer. There's no Thank known you. sustainable yield, um, recharge area, recharge rate. Um, it's unknown. So, um, so whatever you guys' decision, I just really hope you guys will protect this resource. Mahalo. Me. Aloha. I'm Jarek Maderis Garcia. I'm the president of Pepekeo Community Association and uh, chairman of the Shoreline Fishermen. Um, I'm in opposition to the reconsider. Everybody spoke 
on behalf of what I have to say pretty much, but uh, I just look at you folks. I see this is the, pretty much the last resort of you folks being our protectors. So I ask you guys to just protect, protect us. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for hearing our testimonies today. My name is Leah Sherwood. I am a graduate student at UH Hilo. My field of research is plastic pollution in the marine environment. I work with Hawaii Wildlife Fund at Camillo South Point conducting plastic marine pollution surveys. Since 2016, we have removed 260 tons of plastic marine pollution. Including that number are plastic water bottles, beverage bottles, and thousands of plastic bottle caps. I've personally accounted 800 plastic bottle caps in one day. I am in strong opposition to this proposal for an SMA use permit by Palani Partners LLC. Given the important role of the Commission of Water Resource Management with water quality issues and the relevancy to this SMA application proposal, I would like to ask the Windward Planning Commission to either decline this proposal outright or again to defer it until the new update to the Water Resources Protection <coughs> Plan update is finalized. This year, the Hawaii Legislature is taking action to secure an ocean-friendly future. This is to combat plastic marine pollution, which can be found in every ocean from the surface waters to the ocean floor. Plastic poses threats to our wildlife, such as our Hawaiian monk seals, who are disproportionately harmed by plastic marine <coughs> pollution due to physical oceanographic processes that allow global, pl global plastic pollution to accumulate near our islands. Let's work together to minimize the impacts of single-use plastics. Let's join together to protect our state and its wildlife from plastic marine pollution. Please vote no to the SMA use permit to help protect our natural resources, our ecosystems, and our oceans. Nature is not a commodity, and water is not a commodity either. Water is a natural resource that needs to be protected. Thank you for your time. Aloha mai kako, o vauno o kuulani muse, o mauna kea ko umauna, o maha kea ko uvai, o kahua ku aina e noho nei. I'm speaking to you today as a mother of three young children and as the vice president of the Hui Aloha Aina o Hilo. Um, I want to mahalo you for your time and mahalo for your motion to defer, which in my humble opinion was a wise decision, and I'm here to ask that you hold to your decision of an indefinite continuance. Um, Ms. Fung earlier referred to the 2014 Supreme Court finding that the public trust is the duty and authority to maintain the purity of waters for future generations and to assure that the waters of our land are put to reasonable and beneficial uses. I do not see, and maybe according to your motion to defer that you might not see as well, how the privatization of this invaluable and to many sacred vayakane will benefit our future generations, our children, our children's children, how will tapping and bottling a deep, contained, unknown and untouched aquifer put this public trust resource to reasonable and beneficial use? Reasonable how and beneficial to whom? Mahalo again for your consideration and I ask again that you hold firm to your decision to defer. Mahalo nui. I'm Claudia Rohr. Um, I sent a memorandum in opposition to their uh, motion discussing the public trust doctrine. They referred to the wrong section of the Constitution that applies to the county and the planning commission. It's Article 11, Section 1 of the Hawaii Constitution that covers the planning commission and the county of Hawaii. It also requires not only do you have a duty in um, scrutinizing the project and its impact on what the applicant is admitting to is a very special, spiritual, historic, 2,000-year-old um, accumulation of Mauna Kea rainwater that has significance to our native Hawaiians. But you must also look at the impacts on the public lands in the vicinity of this proposal. That would be Wailoa River Recreational Area. If you read the Big Island Noise Manual, in there you'll see that noise uh, has health effects on humans and wildlife. Um, Backup beeper noise is not regulated because it's a safety issue. There's no regulations. The applicant set corrected uh, the, the background information and said that they would be having six to eight trucks 
an hour. That means that forklifts will be loading in pallets of water bottles all the time. One of the effects of noise is it angers people. And that can be a safety issue in our Wailoa Park, <clears throat> State Park. People getting angry over the beeping noise, and maybe they don't have good control of their impulses, they're going to start fights. This, there's plenty of reasons, both for the reasons I stated in my memorandum, but also because you have an obligation to scrutinize the project's impacts on the public lands 400 feet away. Thank you. P.E. Lani Bottling wants to bottle this water and ship it away as a medicinal or a life-giving liquid is their idea. Are you comparing it to like rhino horn? No, I just mean that if this goes to court, that's just going to be a factual finding that everybody agrees on, that the water has spiritual qualities and that they're trying to um, exploit that, market it. Um, and I think that uh, the uh, Article 12, Section 7 of the Hawaii Constitution, in spirit, would support a ruling on your part or a decision on your part to deny the permit because of the impacts on the historic spiritual water found in the SMA. <laughs> I don't think this is right. It's an insult to Native Hawaiians. Thank you. I have one more question in this. I just got information yesterday, or day before at two o'clock, and it indicates that P.E. Lani Partners just signed an agreement to be able to assume somebody else's position for an option to purchase the property. Could you tell me whether they actually have sufficient vesting to take the, anyone to court? I don't know if they really have sufficient ownership in the property. I don't think that's a matter for us here today. Well, they're always Look. threatening to sue and I couldn't understand how they were able to I, I suggest apply. you ask their attorneys about that issue. It's not up, doesn't have anything to do with us, Ms. Orr. My name is Jeff Shaw, and um, well, this is uh, speculation on my part, and um, it seems like they're very persistent, this, this entity, the Pialani Partners, and I'm going to speculate on why they're so persistent. They can see the writing on the wall, and if you remember back, you know, decades ago, bottled water was basically Perrier and Avion, and there wasn't all these other brands, you know, and it was from a pretty exclusive source, and they, you paid a lot of money for it, and it was kind of a, you know, a, a, a vanity thing, you know. You, if you were drinking that Perrier water, you were some fancy dude, you know. The regular people couldn't afford that stuff. And so what's happening with the, um, with the bottling industry is that, you know, there, there's a lot of, of um, opposition to it. And I see you guys have, you know, water cups and stuff now instead of um, using your bottled water. When I came to these meetings before, everybody would have a bottle of water in front of them. And now people are changing, you know. And, and they're, they're smart, you know. They, they can see the writing on the wall. You got to get something exclusive. You know, so they want to tap into that Mauna Kea water source. And this is all speculation. I'm not in their board, you know, in their board meetings, whatever, but uh, I think it's an educated speculation. And so, you know, when, when, when it gets back to, when, when, you know, years down the line when this is on all happening, you know, you'll be looking back on this and saying, wow, you know, we were, we were part of that, you know. And, um, now you have a chance to, um, to, 
you know, at, at least at least slow the slow the ball down, you know. I mean, if these guys are persistent, they'll just keep going. And I also want to go back to um, when I was here before. I was um, discussing um, the the okay. <laughs> I, I was discussing the um, the attempt to do a study of the effects of, um, of PGV on the Hawaiian community, you know, and that study never happened. Even though you guys voted for it, you know, the, the few people that are, that are still here, you voted for it, it never happened. And if that study would have happened, you know, we would know how much stuff like this affects the Hawaiian community, you know. It's, it's not just a, a, a subtle effect, it's a, you know, I mean, having these, these things happen to you over and over and over again, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's compounds itself. You know, whether you're talking about Mauna Kea, whether you're talking about PGV, whether you're talking about, um, you know, uh, Pahakaloa, it all compounds itself. And this is just one more, one more um, piece of the, you know, being, being inflicted. So I guess that's my testimony. Thank you. Thank you for your service. My name is Shelley Mahihanai. I actually used to work for the county a while back under County Councilman Bob Jacobson and um, Emily Nioli. Um, I wanted to <clears throat> also um, request that the county um, wait until the uh, report comes out, the water resource management and the water resource protection plan. Um, I also wanted to bring up the issue uh, of the HRS 174C-101 that was mentioned before. Um, it's concerning the public trust doctrine where Commission on Water Resource Management failed to render the requisite findings of fact and conclusion of law with respect to whether applicant has satisfied its burden as mandated by the state water code, it violated its public trust duty to protect the Department of Hawaiian Homelands reservation rights under the Hawaiian Home Commission Act, the state water code, the state constitution, and the public trust doctrine in balancing the various competing interests in the state water resource trust. So um, I also wanted to bring up the issue of um, concern for the language by P. Ilani Trust uh, that they want to obtain a foundation of data. And um, this is sort of a red flag for possible use of either dye or radioactive isotopes that they put into um, the water source to see where it flows, how much and whatnot. And um, <clears throat> um, I want to put a cease and desist um, on that. I think the the um, community would also agree that they don't want um, any such things added to the public trust waters. Um, also, that um, on the verge of stopping the use of styrofoam and water bottles and whatnot, a ban on um, personal use items, that uh, we should not be having and encouraging a water bottling facility with plastic water bottles. Um, I wanted to also bring up the um, issue of the Mauna Kea Aquifer. Uh, right now, up on top Mauna Kea, there are 13 observatories. They have um, what they call French drains, which are basically just open gravel pits into the aquifers. And the, um, the blueprints and whatnot um, are at the Department of Planning and Archives. I think uh, they should be brought out and examined and that either they, uh, these need to be decommissioned or the French water drains because um, of the runoff from the mercury that the lens floats on. That's a big problem there. So we need to protect the aquifer. And so um, in general, I just wanted to, to also say that um, we need to preserve as much as we can the ambience, um, from between the Kahiko to the Iwana of Hilo, because this, a bottling plant that's gonna make noise and, and possibly fumes, I'm not sure about um, if they're actually making the bottles there, 
if there's fumes coming off, but I know the noise in particular from the trucks um, could have an effect on Mary Monarch and the whole um, cultural, uh, what goes on in that vicinity. And um, I just think that it should be <clears throat> considered on that level. And um, also that um, there are what they call opportunate water rights inside the Ahupua'a. And, um, please, okay. please wrap it up, please. Oh, already. And um, so basically, um, I am opposed to the Pi'ilani uh, water bottling plant, and um, I hope you will be too. And that um, we look forward to a better future protecting our oceans. And that right now, um, the Pacific Ocean is under um, threat from ocean mining activities from the International Seabed Authority. We don't need to be adding any more plastics. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you both. Are there any questions for these testifiers? If not, uh, is there any other person that wishes to testify on this? application i would like to move into executive session to discuss further issues with corporate counsel second it's been moved and seconded that we go into executive session to discuss our legal options with our corporate counsel down on the land that we love and we're like f you County councils pulling strings in their political rings and we're like F U F F them too Industrial zoning gonna keep us all moaning Water bottling ain't that some shit Well that's some shit Friends helping friends it's a means to the end and we're like F U F U plastic not so fantastic Shipping bottled water to Japan. Council passed it. Use bait and switch tactics. Benefiting Sui Sen. Our water so pure in our aquifer. Oh shit, don't mess with it. You don't better not with mess with it. Don't, don't contaminate our pools. We got our eyes on you. You're panning round town on the land that we love and we're like, F you. Okay, here we go, we're good to go. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'm sorry, the motion was to reconsider the decision yes. of the last, of the last reconsideration? Yes. Okay. No. Or, or to no. consider P.E. Lani The decision partners. of the last commission meeting. Reconsider the decision of the last commission meeting. Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ch uh, Commissioner Rucklogel? Aye. Commissioner De La Cruz? Aye. Commissioner Aguinaldo? Aye. Commissioner Ikeda? Aye. Commissioner Rafapi? Aye. And Chair Clarkson? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Motion carries 6 nothing. Okay, at this time, the Chair will ask for a motion for action on the application, the original application from PE Lani Partners. I would, I move that the application for a special management area use permit docket <clears throat> number SMA 18-000070 be denied for the following reasons. And one is the agency's duty and authority is to maintain the purity and flow of our waters for the future generations and to assure that the waters of our land are put to reasonable and beneficial use. Giving private business access to our water so they may enrich themselves is not reasonable or beneficial use to our natural resource for our people. I see nothing in the application that is in the public trust or interest. Number two, the agency must determine whether the proposed use is consistent with trust purposes, maintenance of waters in natural state, protection of domestic water use, access, enjoyment, and resource protection. 
Will the water remain in its natural state if at the time of drilling water from the Mauna Kea aquifer, I, excuse me, water from the Mauna Loa aquifer leaks into the Mauna Kea aquifer, a risk the public may be willing to take at a future date should the need for water arise as a result of water depletion in our present sources of water become acute. However, at this time, to take that risk will do nothing for the public trust or in the public's best future interests. It will not provide protection of future domestic water use. Three, the agency needs to apply a presumption in favor of public use, access, enjoyment, and resource protection. We are to presume in favor of the public use. The public has spoken and given written testimony. That's what all this is. This is one person per page stating they don't want this to happen. Where am I? The public has spoken and given written testimony stating why this application should be denied. All may not be legally part of the debate, however, they are true. In fact, serious concerns of our natural resources beyond the extraction of water and a water bottling, bottling facility. So we're talking about plastic or ecosystem services. Again, approving application SMA 18-00070 is not in the best interest of the public trust. I skipped the next two and went to six. The agency must apply reasonable beneficial use standard which requires examination of the proposed use in relation to other public and private uses. Having access to the land from which to pump the water, being close to all forms of shipping and knowing all the right people does not give vested rights to water. Being private and commercial, you are under greater scrutiny considering what appears to be happening on the world stage regarding the scrambling by corporate business and wealthy individuals to grab up and control all remaining natural resources at the expense of people who live in the region. Number six takes us, I think that's enough. Second. Thank you. Second. It's been moved that the application be denied. It's been moved and seconded. Hold the commission, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Rep. Logal. Aye. Commissioner Ikeda. Aye. Commissioner Aguinaldo. Aye. Commissioner De La Cruz. Aye. Commissioner Rafapi? Aye. And Chair Clarkson? No. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Motion carries 5-1. The next item on the agenda is an application from Wailani Development. I'd like to uh, have staff Replay the, repeat your presentation from the previous meeting. 